I'm Dr. Jess Mason, and I confess that reducing a finger dislocation is a true joy of emergency medicine. It's fixable and gratifying for all involved. This x-ray confirms a volar dislocation at the PIP joint of the fifth finger, which is actually more rare than a dorsal dislocation. Some patients just want you to pop it back in, but I do offer patients a digital nerve block if they want it. Prep the skin, and there's several techniques for digital nerve blocks. The one that I'm using here is the web space approach. The needle's inserted from the palmar side to each side of the base of the finger along the course of the digital nerve. Aspirate and inject one to two mLs of local anesthetic. You can see blanching of the proximal phalanx and duskiness distally, probably due to the fluid injected, which decreased blood flow. This is transient, but a good demonstration why we need to be cautious with the volume that's injected. The reduction technique makes sense when you review the x-ray. First, brace the finger at the proximal phalanx to provide counter-traction. Second, pull axial traction to disengage the middle phalanx from the proximal phalanx. Third, pull the middle phalanx back into place while extending the finger. The same concept is used for dorsal or lateral dislocations. Again, brace the proximal phalanx, pull axial traction, and pull the finger back into place. Let's look at another finger dislocation. This time it's the ring finger, PIP, and it's also in a volar direction. Remember, the direction is defined by the distal portion, and in this case, that's going volar, or palmar. After your digital nerve block, brace the proximal phalanx, pull axial traction, and pull that finger back into place. After reduction, check for full range of motion of the finger, which might be a little limited due to pain and swelling. This includes checking for lateral stability and also checking the flexor digitorum tendons. To test the flexor digitorum superficialis, brace the other fingers in extension and ask the patient to flex at the PIP joint. To test the flexor digitorum profundus, brace the finger at the middle phalanx and ask the patient to bend at the DIP joint or the distal knuckle. Both of the patients shown actually had anterior dislocations, also known as palmar or volar dislocations. Yeah, all three names. So that's high risk for a central slip injury, and we need to do an Elson test to assess for that. Have the patient curl their fingers around the edge of a table or a box with their fingers flexed at the PIP, and then they extend their finger while you apply pressure to the middle phalanx. If the central slip is intact, you'll feel tension as the finger is extended. In this case, there is not much tension, which is concerning for a central slip injury. So this patient needs close follow-up with a hand surgeon. For volar dislocations, splint and extension for three weeks. For dorsal dislocations, you can either splint in 30 degrees of flexion for two to three weeks or buddy tape for two to three weeks if stable. Lateral dislocations can be buddy taped for two to three weeks. Close hand surgery follow-up is recommended.